about this book, uh, I want to say at the very beginning that without Frank Proctor, I would never have such an entity in your presence. I would never have published it. I never even have dreamed of even writing the reviews. He first started a magazine called Amuse, hence the title Musings. It's a fun uh, And then he invited me as one of the first contributors. And he gave me a kind of free hand uh, to do whatever I wanted to write. Uh, it was a kind of a proviso that it should be Hong Kong based and Hong Kong centered. That should say that presumably I should write about Hong Kong books or books on Hong Kong in any language. Uh, but I took his command uh, somewhat amorphously, liberally. Uh, but basically, I wanted to write about anything that I like from Hong Kong perspective. So one of the features of the book if I may say so, is that it is a very provincial book in the sense that it is specifically anchored in the Hong Kong perspective. Uh, even when I write about 1984, I look at Orwell's legacy from present day Hong Kong. Uh, but of course, the book contains a few commentaries on Hong Kong literacy and other things. Uh, I was ordered to write basically uh, once a month, uh, at whatever lens, uh, with the blessings of the editor-in-chief, Perry Lam, uh, who basically gave me a free hand. Uh, so somehow got carried away. So Perry, poor Perry had to cut the fat out and edit my uh, manuscript. Uh, as my wife knows, I did work hard because uh, having spent so many years in Hong Kong, I realized that my Cantonese is getting better and better, and my English is getting worse and worse, uh, especially my writing ability. So writing reviews uh, also uh, gives me a chance to polish up what I have learned, also the hard work, uh, over the years, from grammar books in high school all the way to foreign languages major, and then later on, uh, different universities where I taught mostly English. Uh, so the book is really a smorgasbord. Uh, it contains almost all the essays I wrote during the four year period for Muse. Uh, some of you may have already read some of the reviews. But of course, looking back on its contents, uh, I'm never quite that happy. Although I'm very happy with this publication, but I never quite have happy with what I said. Uh, if I were given one more day, I would have polished off another okay. word, another <laughs> phrase. <laughs> but it's all happened now. So usually, you know, each essay would have to be dragged out by my wife. I said, enough, enough, enough. Don't polish it. Uh, so one of the sort of a criticism I have is that in terms of style, especially with David here, uh, uh, I really need some work. It really needs some work. I really need to work even harder. Uh, because I believe that nowadays in Hong Kong, when people write English, they think only functionally. They do not think that in any language, the first thing after you learn the basic rules is style. In Chinese, vernacular Chinese, Bai Hua, you also need style. Some of the eminent critics in Hong Kong, they write with style. You know it's written by so and so so. But in English nowadays, if you look around you know, on the newspapers, on the country, you don't find any distinct style. So, so I try to develop a certain conversational style uh, uh, on a somewhat learned basis. That is to say that I don't want to chit chat about nothing. Uh, I know that most of my readers expect me to be a scholar, but I don't. But I don't want to use jargon. I do. I use very little theoretical jargon here. Uh, but I want to make my essay, my prose, approachable, uh, accessible to the common reader. But sometimes I couldn't help uh, having a pun here, doing a promo there, quoting another authority here, or there. Uh, this comes from an old habit of mine uh, when I was still a young graduate student. 
before even Stephen met me. Uh, during my uh, university days, or my, my postgraduate days, uh, at Chicago and Harvard and elsewhere, uh, I had a bad habit, or the good habit, of subscribing to a number of uh, magazines. Uh, specifically, I remember the New York Review of Books, New Yorker, Atlantic, New Republic, and then, you know, the magazine that still stays in my memory, the Saturday Review, uh, which already folded up there again. So, almost without sort of a consciousness, I found myself imitating uh, some of the columnists, uh, Lionel Trilling, Dwayne uh, McDonald, and all those people. So I thought that that was the style, because in college uh, in Taiwan, I was never taught how to write with the style until my senior year, but that is always too late. Uh, so in a way, I consciously work at my style, which alas is failing uh, in Hong Kong. Uh, I'm, I'm in, in that sense, it's in a stylistic desert. Uh, I wish people could criticize me for this bad turn of phrase. Maybe they can do that later, I'll give them a book. <laughs> Uh, the other thing I want to mention is that uh, since I'm locally anchored, I write with a specific Chinese consciousness uh, in my prose. That is to say that I expect my readers to be bilingual, or mostly bilingual, or English readers who know a smattering of Chinese, so that they will see what I mean, especially when I comment upon Chinese language material. Most of the uh, material uh, by Hong Kong writers, of course, are written in Chinese. Uh, the one hero or heroine uh, in my book, uh, whom I criticize gently, is Eileen Chan, uh, Chan uh, uh, on the occasion of her two recent uh, novels, uh, published originally written in English and published by Hong Kong University Press. So I was a reader for Hong Kong University Press. Uh, so that gave me occasion to comment on her bilingualism. Uh, I think Zhang Yiling writes, albeit in English, she thinks still in Chinese, just as I do. Uh, sometimes I find myself doing a kind of a two-level writing. Uh, on the surface, it's English. Uh, uh, deep down, I still think occasionally in Chinese. How can I turn this kind of a bilingual style into something truly innovative? Uh, this is my goal, but I have yet to achieve that. Uh, I, I think I failed in that. that is, I become something too conversational, uh, too chatty. Uh, I wish I could uh, play on sort of these complex levels a little bit more. Uh, but it comes from some of my commentaries on Eileen Chan's prose, where I compare the Chinese with the English, uh, uh, some of the sentences and all that. So aside from these two stylistic features, the other thing that comes to me as a kind of a happy surprise, in fact, is his friend, when he edited my book, he came out that, after all, all these essays do have a theme to them, that unites all of them. And that theme is basically cosmopolitanism a kind of a cosmopolitan literary vision uh, that is anchored locally in Hong Kong, but that looks out from Hong Kong toward contemporary writing in the world. Uh, so, and as the slogan goes, right, uh, sounds very good, but once you practice very hard, so you set your foot in Hong Kong, but how do you look at the world from Hong Kong, uh, from uh, the world? So of course, my next step for me was all for Asian writers. Uh, in this case, I'm particularly proud to be one of the few writers in Hong Kong, or critics in Hong Kong, who write about Indonesia's famous writer, uh, uh, Prem, Prem Jaya Ananta Tor. Uh, I, I read the four volume uh, novel uh, that uh, he did while in prison, he was a political prison. I was deeply impressed, uh, even by the translation. So I thought that was one of my small contributions to Hong Kong uh, literary scene. And then from other, then I wrote about uh, the Japanese writer and then Hajin and a few others. Uh, 
And then, of course, gradually, as I gained a free hand, uh, I started branching off into my favorite modern Western writers, uh, particularly Kafka. Uh, and then, since Kafka was quite hot in Hong Kong, so I thought maybe I would get a few readers uh, in Hong Kong. And then, uh, Orwell came as an afterthought. Uh, I never liked Orwell that much because he's not a good scholar. Although he writes eloquently in defense of the English language, uh, at least in my mind. But then I realized that uh, one day it occurred to me that most of my graduate students were born after 1980. And I said, well, maybe time has come for afterthought, a real retrospective. Uh, that what if a, a new, a, 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 a post 1980, post 1980, Hong Kong reader, Hong Kong student, who reads 1984 for the first time. What would that look? What would that book look? Uh, technologically, you'll find that the book is old hat. There's nothing new. All the videos on the screen, all that. Yeah, even the censorship and all that. Is, you know, is, in terms of technology, it's really not that modern. Uh, but what would all world still have to offer to? That that's the beginning part of my, my sort of, uh, uh, my writing about all, and a few others forgot. Oh, Maro, uh, Maro, nobody cares about Maro anymore. But I taught it. Maro's uh, La Condition Human, the Human Condition, uh, which to me is still one of the best books about the Chinese Revolution, the Urban Revolution, uh, the failed Urban Revolution against Shanghai Shen. So, so part of the book contains my essays of this sort. Whether they will be received by critics uh, outside of Hong Kong, I have no idea. I would anticipate very few readers outside of Hong Kong, and equally few readers, few readers inside of Hong Kong. Um, that's why I really would like to compliment uh, Frank for taking the daring step of publishing this book, which is which is clearly box office poison. Uh, it's certainly <laughs> not going to be a best yeah. uh, But just to give you one footnote. Uh, when the first printing of this book came out, Frank came to me with deep apologies, saying that there was one printing error. He said, in the table of contents on page three, uh, there is an extra P. There's an extra P. Uh, on this essay about this Indonesian writer. I said, who cares? You know, I, in fact, I look at the table of contents, I couldn't find it. <laughs> so he took the effort of destroying all, what, 500 copies? How many copies? Of the entire first printing and reprinted the whole thing because he wanted to make this book perfect. I have never uh, had the honor of getting any of my books done this way. Not Harvard University Press, not Indiana, certainly not Oxford in Hong Kong. Uh, commercial Press, I don't know. Uh, I, uh, we'll try it. Uh, such perfectionism. Uh, I really feel deeply touched that honor. Uh, so if the contents leave much to be desired, uh, the printing is perfect. Together with the cover, blue I think is uh, May's, your daughter's favorite color. <laughs> so is my wife. My wife takes one look on the cover and says, "It's a good book." <laughs> then she thinks about you remember it's all the toil and the sweat that I went through, and then say, "Well, I'm not so sure." But, you know, she didn't say that. So uh, the last thing that for those of you who are familiar with Hong Kong culture or who be very familiar. My, my essays on Hong Kong writers are relatively familiar to most of you, except that uh, I have a very interesting exchange with a uh, critic uh, who, uh, I, I don't know, I thought she, he might show up anyway, uh, who uh, wrote a letter to the editor uh, criticizing my concept of cultural criticism, uh, saying that I really have failed to live up to the idea of cultural criticism. I was very grateful, so I wrote a response. So 
So the last essay is basically an exchange uh, uh, between this author. Uh, so I still try to live up to uh, his ideals, uh, although uh, having published this book and having reached the grand old age of 72, I feel that I should take it easy <laughs> work on something else. So I have no plan to write an English review. Uh, so this may be my only book, perhaps, uh, uh, of book reviews of this kind. Uh, so I guess that's basically what I have to say. Uh, I welcome all your criticism and comments and questions. Uh, my brother-in-law is here, and my wife is here, and my, some of my good friends are here. Uh, again, none of my students are here, to be expected. Uh, <laughs> uh, <coughs> So, uh, you uh, that seems to be a bad way of selling my book. <laughs> <laughs>